Hi guys, well today is the launch of the Corsair Carbide 67C. The Carbide series is loaded with different cases, it's the most active really inside Corsair's portfolio and with the 67C today we're going to be stepping away from the aggressive styling that you might find on a gamer case with those sharp cutouts in the RGB and instead we have something which is definitely going to bring some style and finesse. Along with the elegant external design, 67C features extensive noise damping to reduce the overall system noise. Inside we have an interesting array of features, massive cooling potential, and with the surprise return of the 5 and a quarter bay. 67C is available in black or white, we're obviously looking at the black version today, and in terms of the pricing for this particular case here, you're looking at around about 179 in the UK, uh, 200 in the US, and then 279 in Australia so it isn't cheap but hopefully for that price you know we're getting a good assortment of uh, various features inside and coming from Corsair we expect the high standard that we see in other cases. In our video today we're going to be exploring plenty of uh, other features obviously looking at the clearance options loads of detail and hopefully by the end you'll be able to establish if it is worth a buy. Right guys, well we're going to start with the front of 678C, so here we have a plastic fascia which as you can see is completely flat, apart from the Corsair logo at the bottom there isn't a lot else to say. Now this panel is hinged from the right side and it opens out just like this. Those hinges are robust and movement appears to be nice and smooth. On the inside of this panel we have noise damping material and you can see it hasn't just been quickly cut out, glued and slapped onto that fascia, it neatly sits into the panel embedded and it fits around the magnets. At the top of the chassis we have a five and a quarter bay cover which pops out. This type of storage has pretty much been phased out in modern case design but for those wanting it, it is there as an option. In the lower region we have a detachable dust filter which has the magnets and on the inside of there there is allocation for three 120mm fans or two 140mm. Corsair has included a 140mm as an intake that is an SP140 PWM. Now the front panel connectivity sits on the edge of the upper section and is arranged in a vertical manner and what we get here is a power button, a reset button, activity LED, two USB 3 ports, a single USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C and a headphone and microphone jack. And so it's great to see that Corsair are getting on board there with the USB 3.1 on the front panel. Most motherboards from this and last year have the headers there to work in correspondence with this. Up at the top of 678C we have a steel outer and there are two panels which can be fitted into the center piece. We have a perforated mesh filter there which will provide better airflow or there is a closed off panel with the noise damping material on the inside which will obviously help to kill off as much noise as possible. And so the choice is yours which one you go with and it's great to see that there is flexibility here rather than just one option. Now underneath this we have a huge area marked out for triple 120 or 140 millimeter fans which will give plenty of cooling potential. And again Corsair has provided a 140 millimeter SP140 PWM. Okay, so for the side panels, on the prominent side here we have a large glass panel which doesn't quite give you edge to edge viewing but it does have the hinges which means that you can gain access to the system quite easily. And you can even pull the panel off the hinges entirely and that is something we did during our installation process. Over on the other side we have just a solid panel and again this has the noise damping material to prevent any sound leakage. With those panels removed we now have a view inside 678C and this case here follows a conventional layout for a computer case. It accommodates up to EATX form factor and around the case we have lots of storage options and cutouts for cable management. We're going to explore this now in more detail. Now the power supply sits at the bottom of the chassis and it is concealed behind this shroud on the prominent side and there are rubber mounts underneath to cushion it. Underneath the power supply we get a dust filter which covers the entire bottom section of the case however this is accessed from the front rather than the back which is a great idea since the back of the case is usually facing a wall or is difficult to get to. Above the power supply we have a series of seven horizontal PCI covers and two vertical. Each of those have the ventilation cutouts and thumb screws. We've used the verticals in our build to showcase the graphics card and we did this by using Corsair's PCI Express extension cable. The only problem in our situation is the card comes extremely close to that CPU heatsink since the width of the card is 120mm. So a word of warning, if you do have a card over 120 and you have a heatsink, it might not fit. 
Above this we have a 140mm rear exhaust fan and this is another SP140 PWM. And as we've already mentioned at the top there we have the space to add in more fans and there is a 140 included too. Over on the other side there is an optical bay which will need those standard screws attaching to the sides and that cage can be removed if desired. Below this there is a large section for storage. There are 8 locations and 6 modular trays. We've seen these before. They simply detach from the reverse side via the thumb screws. All you've got to do is slide the drive into one of the available trays, add in some screws and pop the tray back in while tightening back those thumb screws. Around the back behind the Mobo tray we have allocation for SSDs as well. There are three easy to access trays. A drive simply drops into the slot and it's as easy as that. As we're on the reverse side, now would be a good time to mention the PWM hub. Corsa has included a PWM fan controller inside 678C and all three of the fans are already connected. There are another three available. All you have to do with this is to make sure to connect the SATA power to the power supply and the PWM cable to the PWM header on the MOBO. This allows you to effectively control the speed of the fans from one header. Okay, so next we're going to take a closer look at the clearance options within 678C as this is quite an important area for you system builders who need to know whether something will fit or not. So for the CPU cooler, of course I specify 170mm. This is going to cater for anything currently on the market. We're using the Hyper 212 Evo here in this build, which is under 160 in the graphics card department, if you choose to keep some of those storage trays in, you have space for up to 330 millimeters, but if you remove them, you have around 370 millimeters. And we should also note that if you do use the vertical mount and a heatsink just like us, if your card is over 120 millimeter, it could struggle to fit. Now the location behind the MOBO tray is important for storing cables, but there isn't a lot of space to play with here, around one centimetre. However, there are some indentations towards the front which should help, and there are of course those gaps there to tuck away any redundant cables. For the CPU power, we are able to remove the SSD bracket to feed that cable in and then reattach the bracket afterwards. For water cooling, there is quite a bit of flexibility for different size radiators. At the front there, you can install up to 360 millimeter. We've got here a 280 millimeter for the demonstration. And at the top, there is an option there to go up to 420 with the removal of that optical cage. And again, we've installed a 280 millimeter just to show the clearance. And with the fan and radiator together, there is a bit of space there left over at the top of the MOBO. So that is the lowdown on Corsair's Carbide Series 67C. A stylish, elegant case which really doubles down on noise reduction. And with those thick panels, the material on the inside, and then the PWM fan controller, it really does manage to achieve that. Inside of the case, you're gonna find plenty of storage options, uh, support for high performance kit, whatever that is, uh, your CPU cooler, your graphics card, or radiators. Corsair has included the three fans, uh, with this case and the option to maximize adding up to nine 120s or seven 140s. Now two things which I really like about this case are the 3.1 Gen 2 up at the front panel. Mobos today support it, saves you having to scratch around at the back looking for it. And the other thing is the interchangeable covers, uh, which is a really lovely touch. You can either go with a better airflow or low noise and you aren't fixed to just one option. If you guys like this case, let me know in the comments box below. We're going to be sticking a poll on this video asking you the question, do you prefer low noise or better airflow? Just click on the uh, link in the corner and cast your vote. For the cooling performance on this case today and the full review, please check out the link in the description. Thanks very much for watching today, guys. Please support the channel if you enjoyed this content. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.